we use call to order. Uh, and it looks like we've got a quorum. And we need to do a quick agenda review. If you take a look at your agenda, and if you want to change it in any way, just type up. So one thing is, Lisa Krieger sent an email today. She had planned to be here, yeah. but we're going to be looking at her draft proposal. Okay. But at the last minute, she had to. She has other things she's doing. Okay. So she. So we have to pull that. So we can either talk about it. I think we should still. Or something. I mean, I don't know. But okay. Well, we'll just be aware of the fact that. Figure it out. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we talk about it that yeah. way. She can. Yeah. Have feedback or something. Yeah. Anything else we need to look at on the agenda? Oh, I wondered to, um, the who put in the stuff about bridges, building bridges? Is that you? Who did that come from? Oh, that came from you. Okay. That came from. I was just going to suggest from Dr. Google. Dr. Google. Okay. I was going to suggest we just put it since it's a new thing. Is it new? I thought I don't think we talked about that we I guess it's it not again. ongoing business, you're right. Maybe just put it at the bottom at the as the last one. Right? <laughs> yeah. All right, we'll do that. Anything else? That means there's no ongoing business. Um, yeah. And uh can we still discuss the public defender thing? I know I asked that for that to be on the agenda. And I guess I'd still like to talk. It's all you do. Y'all are good with it? All right, great. It's highlighting. Yeah. The means they're not presenting. Okay. The highlighting means the folks on that group said that they don't really have anything to report. So take it off. Okay. So we got a couple of things. Yes. Anything else for the agenda, folks? Oh, did you read about something? All righty. Uh, do we have minutes to look at it? Yeah. No. We don't. Why don't we take until next? Yeah. Oh, okay. That is just that's not highlighted for something. Who's taking the dice to that meeting? Yeah. Except everything. Yeah. Because we have more minutes and stuff. Yeah, right. So, gotcha. But thanks. Yeah. All right. Good. I'm bad at something. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, look. It's oh, my gosh. John. <laughs> You're too loud. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I only had to sign myself the agenda with my phone. <laughs> 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 yeah. All right. Thank you. All right. Very good. Um, so we're good with the agenda. We're ready to get right into it. Uh, no minutes from last meeting. I got it. Right to, to review. We will table them. No, it's, yeah. Sorry about that. I just, yeah. Uh, next month. Correct. So I'll definitely make sure we have the next one. Okay. Is there anything up there? I didn't read. I should have checked that before I did it. Are we? Are you doing not minutes to tonight, mention? today? Are you doing minutes mm -hmm. there where it's bigger? <laughs> then it's right here. Is this the year for doing it? Yeah, I can. I, it's just remembering it's yeah. after this. And I, yeah. I've got your email later. Remember, I, all we really need is. is no, 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 like my decisions. Minutes, just minutes, but I just Well, the agenda, I think we should, the things we discussed, we should have used list. But we don't need a full of money. No, 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 not at all. Okay, um, all right. Um, I'm going to talk about recent issues with the police. <laughs> I'm, just, oh, as as, I'm just wondering if that, even as a. Well, uh, we can just add it towards the end and we'll decide whether that's appropriate. Okay. okay. Yeah, so right. That, that's. Yeah. Unless, of course, Judith wants to delve into it in her few minutes here. Um, updates and council actions. Well, I did not go to the last meeting, but my understanding is you were, were you there? That no. the proposal, oh, the recommendation one to the mayor's court regarding, you know, things that can go to mayor's court and go to mayor's court passed uh, with some minor, and that maybe you can explain those because I have not been part of that discussion. I well, it happy. passed, I thought, and then it didn't, so I'm not sure. It did pass. Yeah. But there was a lot <laughs> well, of... It passed a number of times in various forms. I. It did pass for the uh, abridged form, which I don't know what was. It abridged. had to do with paying for incarceration <laughs> or something, and I... Well, that well, was that was kind of a, con uh, a conflict. That was a really complicated discussion because it seems like... It? Um, it seemed like there would still be a lot of discretion involved in the way that it's written for violent crimes, I think. Because there can be violent crimes even if they're not abuse 
I suppose. And so there's a lot of discretion still there on the officer's part. So it almost seems not strong enough the way that it's written. And did it pass? It, has, did it, it did pass, pass. but I, my feeling, and I believe Lisa's feeling, was that it's not strong enough. Was it amended at the meeting? No. Mm -hmm. There really wasn't a way to amend that, I guess. Well, I guess they'd already gone back and forth of, about it. So, so, but, but so it. the recommendation got changed by staff, evidently. Well, there was the meeting with, Lisa, with, with the no, chief, Lisa, know. you, I don't know who else. It was Lisa. Laura. Laura. Yeah. Dan. And got, it was Dan. all ready to go. Everybody liked it. And then there was a sudden last time, oh, wait a minute. You know, we, we need to have a meeting to talk about something. And then I read something having to do with the cost of sending people to jail and who paid for that. That seemed yeah. to me to be the big issue. But the, before yeah, that, that, was that was touched on. Yeah, 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 I mean, it was like, you know, yeah. no yeah. OVIs and no, you know, worrying about people who were living in California and cited for stop sign violation on economic and account those mm -hmm. and trivial stuff. And, you know, the bulk of it was, yes, you run the stop sign, you go to mayor's court. So, yeah. I, and it just went was, off in a different way uh, the, at one point. The, um, that must have happened after at a meeting I wasn't at because all the ones I was at just everything was covered except the OVI and uh, you know, domestic violence. Mm -hmm. I would suggest watching it because it's I was there, but it's hard to follow. Can we get a copy of what was That would make sense. Mm -hmm. Maybe circulated by mail to everybody so people can read it. Mm -hmm. Considering we spent hours talking yeah. about it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who gets, who gets and the meetings on YouTube. I'd be happy to do the request. We do that now. Sure. And then email it out to Brooke. Okay. okay. I just asked you. Yeah, sure. Okay. okay. Council business? Oh, um, the surveillance um, uh, ordinance is going to be delayed till the no two meetings in November. Okay. Um, and it will be coming as an ordinance. And I know you're finalizing that. And I. Uh, I'll mention the status of it under this. Okay. Yeah. Um, um, recommendation about um, studying citizen review isn't happening at the next meeting. Originally, no, it? it's not. It's and there's a place for us to discuss it here. Um, the next meeting, the commission proposal is uh, going to be discussed again, and we're uh, Brian and I are bringing the proposal. We're talking with Juan and Beth. Tomorrow, okay. kind of looking at that. Is that this Monday? The next coming Monday. Monday. Yeah, it'll be coming Monday. Yeah. The first discussion of it um, seemed like three members of council wanted to hold off setting up a commission. Um, if people have strong opinions about it, you might want to come to the council meeting or send a letter, letter to the council, or however you want to. All of the above. It. Huh? I said all of the above. We need people to come. So um, I think that's. So is it about commission or citizen review board? You're talking about? No, commission, the justice system commission, the citizen review board. Well, which the citizen advisory board is what uh, Lisa's calling it. Which is the right board. Yeah. 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 yeah, which which is the board that is which is something like a citizen. It's a complaint. Right? It's a right? complaint. Yeah, yeah. There, there's that. Whatever it's called, yeah. and task force. Which one is going to be talked about next? The commission. Next it won't be a task force anymore. It this be one. This one. Policy. 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 This ongoing. Yeah. So there aren't going to be two right. suggested things, but one suggested thing. Correct. Right. For the next meeting, and then Lisa is going to bring hers at some future date and the complaint. The complaint. Yes. Some complaint board. And. Um, when I talked to Brian, well, what are we going to do? Is that this? Is this on here somewhere? Is that yes, this it's on here. Advisory the new business. Yes, 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 yes. That's it. Oh, that's for the citizens' advisory Because okay. it's but is this on, commission on, on here the, somewhere? I didn't bring it back because the the yeah. last time you guys on saw on it, uh -huh. uh, we brought it to council. Okay. There was discomfort. I meant right, for discussion. Is that I didn't bring it back it because nothing's changed because Brian was making. Because I had a question. Oh, yeah. And I forgot. Yeah, there's no If you have anything further to say about it, I know Dave's opposed to the idea. Thinks it's not. Uh, there's no, no purpose to it. Well, I kind of 
hope for it. I, mean, I know. Yeah, yeah, I did, yeah, that's I did as well at the last meeting too. Yeah, yeah. But I met with um, Marianne about something else yesterday, and I think we both totally forgot that we were also going to talk about this commission oh. coming up because she would like to see what has worked and what hasn't worked, kind of thing. Is that what you guys are going to do? Is that what you're going to format? You made something just like that before, Pat, right? She wants to see what has worked and what hasn't worked. I think she's going to talk to you as well about it. Yeah, worked hasn't worked, worked but for this group? Too many or pronouns here. Exactly. Or, to support I mean, what I said was the commission, looking at it in terms of the national understanding and also examples. And she wants examples of how we worked and didn't work, I suppose. But I think well, it can just show what passed and what didn't pass. I mean, the task force? Yes. I don't understand that. I mean, I think we've all said, or at least I've been in several conversations with you, with Julia, that, that the commission, as it goes forward, should spend some time, I don't know, like two months, three months, in a sort of a review process, right. reflection, what is working, what things are left that were undone. Right. I mean, maybe you could call it an evaluation even, but definitely some. Don't jump in and do something right away. <laughs> Reflective practice. Reflect. Yeah, and Stokes, like, yeah, Stokes had mentioned, like, well, we could do this with more data, da, da, da. and I said, actually, that's when I jumped up to give my two cents here. I said, our group has a lot of we data. Have we have so much data, and if you'd like to do that, that would be a good reason to keep the commission, because we can keep working on the data and look at it in different directions. And I was like, I don't think he's, I don't think he's on board. Everybody wants to invent the wheel. But I know. Yeah, I mean, uh, Nobody wants to ride the bike. <laughs> <laughs> we're yeah. going to have we're going to have a vote at the next meeting. Okay. When Brian and I talked about it. I said, on you know, what? The next commission. commission, commission, on which commission. would be an on ongoing body. Not and, you That's know, and we time. talked about the look back, and we talked about you know looking back, and you know, and then you know, in, at the council at the beginning of the year it sets it sets its goals for the year, and you know, one of the overarching goals is about our justice system and so council wants to be more engaged in specific you know uh, you know goals for our for all of our commissions really um, you know with it, it's a public process so with input of course our commission won't may not even be set up by the time the goals discussion happens but anyway um, but yeah you know there seems to I mean, even though the council gave us a, when they set up the task force, it had all those goals in there, and we pretty much did everything we did that's within those goals. I think there was a discomfort that they didn't have enough input through the process of, of recommendations, of developing recommendations. And part of it is the staff's discomfort, I would say. Okay. It's the usual thing, I think, that these kind of bodies so think it's not that unusual. Right. And we had some discussions. Task force and difficulties. I haven't been on a commission yet that hasn't happened. Someday. I mean, I'm not commenting on it. Yeah, yeah. I'm just. Aren't you the HR? I used to be on HR. Not on HR. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but Steve is, are you still on? Well, yeah. Oh, last question. Well, but it may not be. Uh, oh, you may stay on. So they fly. Yeah. So we'll see. All right. Anything All right. else as far as from the council? Uh, yeah, I, I can't think of anything else. Okay. Um, before we do citizen concerns, I want to just mention something because otherwise, mm -hmm. We'll, I'll forget to mention, which is that people keep their eye on what's going on in the city of Bay in November. They have an item on the ballot. Uh, it's a referendum on the idea of decriminalizing marijuana exactly. possession yeah. uh, in the city. Yeah. Uh, you would basically take it out of the uh, city code as a criminal offense. Uh, and then they would have to have a policy that mandates that the <laughs> officers charge under the city code and not charge under the city code. It's awesome. the state code. Wow. Uh, so it's very interesting. They're they're taking the the concept to the people for a vote, and if they get a favorable vote, then they'll actually figure out how to implement it. 
at least they say they don't exactly know how to do it. But so keep your eye on this. There have been some nice articles in the Daily News about it, probably worth reading. I meant to bring them, but I can get that part. Awesome. Yeah. All right. Just to say, in regards to that, I mean, one of the, we're talking about our hiring practices, and I raised the idea that we should not be testing for marijuana on uh, that. We, and but it's interesting because it's illegal. There's this pushback, of, but it's illegal. <laughs> so, you know, that's, of course, we're not changing that. But anyway, so you might want to keep an eye out. I don't know if, if anything will get done with that before I leave, but I'm just trying to. Oh. All right, as uh, citizen there's also, it's also there's also a state issue. Well, yeah, issue one uh, uh, takes uh, F4s and 5s and turns into misdemeanors, so people will go to prison uh, on the drug, drug offenses. A bunch of other probably pretty darn good stuff. Offense. Citizen concerns? Mm -hmm. Are there citizen concerns? Sharing. Yeah. If you would state your name. And Sharon gonna, Moeller. We usually have a three minute uh, okay. uh, limit unless you're incredibly entertaining. Which is <laughs> 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 uh, well, I think I just have concerns, and you know, I'm not a person that just shuts up and goes away. I'm, I'm a bit of a carrier about things. And I have written three letters to the editor uh, regarding these matters, and Nobody ever answers me. Why doesn't the police department have to uh, explain how uh, promotions are awarded inside the, uh, the department? And why don't they have to? They are uh, our uh, employees. We need to know. I mean, our, um, our prom promotions need more power and more money for the ones that get it. And I can see what called terrible competition in in the department, and it and um, maybe some things that aren't too good. But I mean, I'm just I'm supposing I have no. It would be my guess. I have no idea why the guy that did the New Year's Eve thing did it. But I would think if there was a promotion in the balance, and the boss was out of town. Perhaps he thought that uh, if he, he didn't know Yale's friends, so I think he knew New Year's Eve they'd be drunk. And, and I think if he could incite a riot and then get brownie points for quelling it, he might be the one that got the promotion. So, I mean, you know, when one doesn't you know, I might be way off of the mark there, but when one does not know, they speculate. So I, I would think maybe that's, uh, why we have some of the problems that we have. And I want to know, and every time I put this in, in the paper, why don't, why are there not more things put in the paper that our police department is spending their time with? Now, every time I put this in, the week afterwards, there's a big list of minutia. But the reason I ask those questions is, of where I live, now, the same people still own the property, but the offensive ones have moved away for now anyways. And there were a bunch of young people there, and they partied all the time. They had lots of money, and they partied with it. I called once about a gun going off. I, I called about them racing their dirt bikes and, and Miatas up and down the road. I live on 68, by the way, at, at wee hours of the morning. Nothing has ever done. One night they were throwing bottles over there, and there were, there's a woman screaming her head off, and the bottles landing on the driveway, crashing and booming, and, and there's never anything in the paper. One night last November, I know it's been almost a year, but I've been trying to figure out all this time what happened. There was a sheriff's deputy car right in front of my house, and there was two Yellow Springs squad cars out there. There were officers going in and out of that house like crazy, and okay, but there's never anything in the paper. 
So I would like to know why they don't put more things in the paper. And, and I still stand, if all they're doing is what's in the paper, why do we have to have so many deputies? Thank you. One thing I was going to say, have you sent a letter to Pat Bates sort of asking no. some specific questions? No. You I might couldn't. want to do that. I, I don't it's not in the paper, but I mean, she, she try, I, do, I think she will try to respond to specific But questions. you know what? It's in the paper where she can read it to, and I don't want to be one of those people that's in the know. I want all the citizens to have to be told. Thank you. Yes. Did you I, have have no, I have no complaints. <laughs> <You're good. laughs> okay. All right. All right. Terrific. Thank you. Um, all right. We are ready for the ongoing business part of this. And uh, the mayor's court recommendation. Uh, John, you said you did want to talk about this. Yes. Um, so, so, I feel like I'm. And so this is providing a public defender. Yes. Like so yeah. So basically, um, I feel like the, the the way that this was left was that was you know back in May that uh, the mayor's court working group was going to get back to us about whether the public the Green County Public Defender's Office was able to provide services to um, indigent defendants facing jail time in the Yale Springs Mayor's Court. Um, and then I've heard from uh, from the committee uh, that um, they sort of delegated the work to Yale Springs Mayor's Court. Um, but then I guess that's that's more or less the, the last that I that I heard. And basically if there is just like I would be happy if I was still empowered to go over and ask the Green County Public Defender's Office myself and get the answer to the question of whether or not they would be capable of what would be necessary so that they could provide services to indigent defendants. Could you ask the mayor's office to answer that question? To start with the starting point? Sure. I mean, it seems like they are the ones who should. But if they don't know, which the last time that I asked them they didn't, a couple months ago, then I could just ask the folks that would know. So our, our subcommittee decided to, to just ask the mayor's court to, to yeah. get an answer to this question, mm -hmm. as opposed to doing it themselves. Yeah. Is that right? That, 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 that is what you're going else finish, and then I'll give you the answer. Oh, OK. Well, we're, we're I yield my time. Go ahead. Um, both Laura and I have spoken to the public defenders in office, and they don't send people out except if they're born and senior. Um, they didn't say, no, we won't do it, but it was clear to both of us that they're doing what they're doing. I have spoken with the old and the new clerk of the mayor's court, uh, and, and uh, Elise, and um, most recently, in you know, last week, just to see if they found anything else out. They were in the process of months ago talking with the doing the same thing, you know, talking with the uh, Green County um, Public Defender's Office. Uh, and as of yet, they haven't you know, made any, any progress on that either. They're working on making the transition from and uh, to the lease. The other thing which I think is key, not that this isn't an important thing to do, but there might be one or two cases a year where this is needed. And we have six hours minus about a half an hour left in our uh, task force here. So I would say that if this is an issue that's out there with the mayor's court and then the council is sort of a need heard it and there's not going to be anything happening for a while and it doesn't make sense to me to spend a whole lot of time trying to figure out something for one or two people a year when we have a lot more important things that affect a lot more people. But, but sure. So, what's your... I get what you're saying about we only have six hours left. I do think, uh, as you have pointed out several times, that these three recommendations are interwoven. And as a different kind of cases and more cases are sent to mayor's court instead of being sent elsewhere, that the 
Huh? We need to use the rest of it's one shot notes is what I was saying. Just note down, just right, Beth has pearls with it. So you know more stuff might come up in More stuff might come up. And and I think the other thing is um, it's it's occurred to me sometimes during these discussions that there should probably be a flyer for everybody who goes to mayor's court that says, here, here are the things you have a right to. Here's what mayor's court is and what it does. And here, because people may not request it because they don't realize they can. So those are my two thoughts. And I, I was going to say, I'm aware of a situation where a professional, let's say, got stopped and there was, I think it was driving under the influence of marijuana, could really have affected their profession professionally. She got a lawyer, and she, she came to mayor's court, but she had a lawyer. Now, you know, she had the money to have a lawyer, and just, uh, but for, I mean, those kind of things can affect a lot of people. Uh, their work, in those kind of cases, yeah, if people knew they had the right you know, I don't know if the county's going to come through with it. I mean, I don't know how much we can demand that the county come through with it. If they come, I mean, but yeah. well, if we are the Green County, we are the Green County. We are part of the county. <laughs> so we could have that expectation. Yeah, I mean, I agree with the idea that you know they are interwoven, and that we need to you know you know make plans for having. Representation for people who are indigent when there's a chance they can go to jail. I and mean, that's the criteria for getting uh, a court appointed lawyer, a constitutional criteria. Uh, there, you know, why I'd love to see us do this through the public defender's office. There, you know, we should probably talk to thinking and looking at alternatives to using the public defender's office in case it doesn't work out in our case. When we actually look at them, we decide that they. What sort of, do you have an idea of what alternative? I don't know. I never thought much about this. I mean, I don't know if you can just cook up your own little, I mean, most courts operate, you'll have a public defender and then you'll have an appointment list where the judges will appoint private lawyers to handle certain cases where the public defender might have a conflict, co-defendants, uh, or, you know, murder cases or whatever, whatever certain things. Uh, so, I don't know if we could just have our own little appointment list and do it that way, you know, and just avoid having to mess with the public defender's office. I don't know if you could do it cost effectively. I mean, the thing the public defender brings is they have a mechanism for figuring out whether you're in. That you know, you have like people that will interview you and have a questionnaire and they understand this stuff. And then they have the lawyers ready to rock and roll, theoretically. But you know, I don't. Can I say one more thing? Yeah. I mean, I thought that. Thing that they were trying to keep us from having come to mayor's court is the possibility of somebody who possibly could go to jail. Wasn't that because then we would get stuck with that? No, I guess I'm the bill. bill. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, your constitutional right to a public defender kicks in if if you're charged with something where you could be sent to jail. Okay, not that you are sent to jail. You could right. be sent to jail. Um, so I, I don't know about you know. So if you know, done. You know the stuff that will go to the mayor's court. I mean, we could, of course, appoint them in you know a greater range of cases. It's just the constitutional uh -huh. requirement is the minimum. You could always do more. Yeah. Yeah. But like in, in reality, um, like the jailing cases in which people could face jail time will be sent to mayor's court. They already have been sent to mayor's court. It's like M4, M3, M2, M1. All of those, in theory, you can can get jail time. Right. In reality, for a, the grand majority of those, no one ever sees jail time. You don't necessarily, I think, have to see jail time just because you got convicted of a felony, um, which mayor's court, of course, can't even hear. Uh, so the fact <coughs> that, in reality, in like some like real sense, like the sort of cases going to mayor's court in which someone really could be sent to jail, just really could be sent to jail, maybe one or two cases. The number of cases in which one is a person is constitutionally entitled to a public defender 
art. There's a ton of them. Um, so. So it's beyond if they have if they could possibly go to jail. It. The thing is, is that <clears throat> practically you don't get sent to jail for an M4. No, like that doesn't practically occur. Okay. But the but the, the, the M4 can. Of an M4. Uh, I don't know what an M4 disorderly is. Disorderly conduct. Yeah, like a more serious case of disorderly conduct. Hey, well, yeah. It's not no, his worst. Game. Not his worst than littering. Yeah, yeah. Like, 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 like speeding, like. but like the <laughs> second time. The second time you got charges in the speeding ticket. I need to know why we're having this conversation. I mean, it seems like to me that this is primarily work that the mayor's court staff that people want to figure out. I mean, why are we now talking about it? Are we going to make some kind of job? Um, because so I'm offering to do work. Yeah, so long as it's not, not stepping on anyone's toes. The last time that I talked to the court clerk about it, she was like, uh, it's, yeah, like, we heard about this months ago, but like, we still out, haven't done it, it's like on the back burner. Like, all right, like, they're busy, they have other work. Like, I, it doesn't seem hard to ask somebody, what are the obstacles? Like, I can be dogged in my questioning and then get the answers I mean, in writing. You're, you're, saying you're going, doing this as a citizen or as a representative? Yeah, that's. I mean, that's, that's what I'm asking is for is to get important. right. I'd rather do it as a rep because I mean, my point point is about all the recommendations way. being of a piece is a, is a key thing to remember. And a lot of the things that people have been mentioning are not about public defender for an indigent person, but a whole lot of other things. And if you're going to spend some energy figuring something out, you need to put a boundary around what that figuring thing to figure out is first, and then just focus on that. Right. Otherwise, it turns into something big and massive, which is what this discussion is, you know, is leading to. And again, you know, my, you know, my concern is that we don't have a lot of time left. In this incarnation, we should be you know, more uh, you know, careful well, about well, the time. Well, let us focus our question. Let me, let, me, let me finish. What is the one? question? Oh, look, right, we're right. asking. The question is, do we agree that John, representing our community, and go to UC and have a conversation with the... To answer the specific question, what obstacles stand in the way of them providing yep, um, indigents facing jailable offenses in the Springs Mayor's Court with the public defender services? Why should so, we so that backs up to a, a question before that for me, which is, is this task force pursuing recommendation number three Getting that in front of council and getting council to at least discuss it before the end of the year. Because if the answer is no, then it's off the plate. It's off the, it's not on the list. Anymore. But it's just I'm just passing this baton of information to the future. <laughs> I was gonna say, there's no reason for you as a representative of this group because we want to be that. doing that. And if you want to go to mayor's court and say, I volunteer my time. I can do that. I can too. help you do this. You've been charged with this as well, yes, I could just catch okay. it for Let the Let me suggest something. Rather than we could waltz this around for a while, why don't we just take a little straw poll? Uh, the question is, uh, are, are we comfortable with John representing himself as a representative of this group in doing this little piece of research that he's like? Is that all right? Yes, and sure. Are you comfortable with that? Yes. Um, so in those in favor, we've got Five and those against, yeah, they did not. not. <laughs> That's where yeah. you got on this thing. Yeah. That's yeah. fine with me. Yeah. 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 But yeah. getting the prosecutor taken time. care of will be far more significant and will, I'm sure, impact this kind of an yeah. issue more than anything. And it would make more sense to focus on the whole package instead of one piece of it. Oh, We've got as much information as we're going to get. But if you well, want to go, take your time. Wait. I'd call them up instead of drive it down, save the gas and the pollution, because you get the same information. We'll look forward to hearing from you. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, all right, there's the weirdest. Yeah. Yes. Long We're moving the discussion. Up. Can I ask a quick question on the mayor's court recommendation? What happened with the prosecutor? I can't. What happened to the prosecutor proposal? Have I lost? We passed it along to council. Yeah. yeah. We noticed the commented it, and then we passed it again. Okay. And and oh, in okay. your table that you made of which things are going to count, but I forgot to hand out to everybody. It's on there. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry. I forgot. So good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think it's coming up a later. That's yeah. Right. That's, right. that's, that's okay. Sorry. I've been away too long. I've been. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> the 
it was just like edge of sketch. Okay, that's right. New business. <laughs> Uh, so uh, this is, uh, we don't have Lisa here uh, to basically lead this conversation, but we can have it, I guess. Uh, there seems to be some sense that people wanted to have this conversation. Are uh, we skipping this discussion topic? We move that towards the end. Yeah, okay. It's new business. Fantastic. Or, uh, it's new business, so it'll go after this. Okay. Yeah. Well, I think I've put these concerns out to Lisa already, but I'll just summarize my concerns. It, it appears, it has the appearance of being in conflict with the more serious to me and more important proposal to create a commission. There's a sense of this is in competition. But you really think Lisa's item is that this yeah. is the complaint, right? That Lisa's Which, complaint. She's calling it advisory board slash complaint board. That's the second complaint I have. <laughs> is that it's muddled, it's very muddled in, in vocabulary and in purpose. I second your yes, it's, There's something very wrong with how she's put it together. So yeah. that's my so, second complaint. Yeah. yeah, and my... It does say draft on huh? it. Yes, she's <laughs> looking for input. I know. And then my third complaint, and this was a little bit of a, you know, maybe this is ego or whatever, but we had agreed and voted that we would present the proposal to have a basically a research body looking at it, what would make a good complaint process. That, she went around that. I mean, you know, we, that was something that this group had voted, yes, we're going to take that to council. And then we go to council and she's presenting this thing, which, so it was, I had those three complaints. Well, that's been a standard process with the task force and council ever since the beginning. We do things, the council does something else. It's not necessarily related, but does have the same words in the title. But she's, she's sitting here at her meeting. So, so I was like, well, what, what? This is really confusing. But anyway, separate from that issue, um, I do think the second one in particular, the, the muddle of the two functions, advisory and citizen oversight, and the concept of an advisory board, none of these things are bad. It's just they should not be thrown together. Very confusing, and it's, it doesn't uh, fit with what other people do. Or how they do it, so. My question uh, that I was going to put to her is, I don't understand how this is a board. What what when I look at the flow chart, what I see here is a complaint process that relies on the mediation, the village mediation program, and maybe, and to, to, as an intake body, then all the investigation is done by the chief, mm -hmm. and then maybe something might go to HRC at the very end of things. And so, there's no freestanding board here. So I don't, well, that, that's, making things confused from the get-go, where we talk about, and Dave keeps saying, are we talking about the committee or the other yeah, What are we doing? So that's a, big, that's a big deal for me. And the second part of it, which she presented at council, was that somehow there would be data on this process that then would be given to the police to improve themselves. <coughs> so that then started turning into an advisory to the chief. Which I think should be a total. Uh, should be a what? Totally. Advisory. An advisory board is typically working with the chief and the police department, and you, you know, it typically it's supporting and assisting the, the chief of police. <laughs> you know, it's a, it's a totally different thing. So she's mixing up these th these two things, and I think they feel in competition with the commission. And along those lines, I actually brought this for my working group report, but it's useful right now. Everybody know what the Ohio Collaborative is? Everybody needs to know what it is. It's very important. And they're March, this is already a little out of date, but they, in March they put out the investigation of employee misconduct standard. So one of the things I can't see yeah, yeah. and it's a page I see trying really only this one. And you have to sign this to Why? Part of the work. Okay. Okay. 
Okay, so. Um, Did you get one? Do you want more? You, you may or may not remember that um, Casey, during that period, it was probably, it was DeWine a lot too, wasn't it? Yeah, and also, but actually it was Casey started, oh, it was. he did the uh, Ohio Task Force on Community Police Relations. And this was a response to you know, murders and other police murders and other things going on in Ohio. Probably started about 2014. Anyway, it has evolved into, it has now turned into the Ohio Collaborative, and it also has turned into a kind of certification board. So they are certifying police departments all over Ohio, and our own police department, the sergeants in particular, have been working to get certified. And there's some value in being certified. A department is certified, not a police officer, correct? Right, the department is certified. So all police departments and sheriff's departments in Ohio are trying to get themselves certified through this process. And um, what's interesting is it's a, basically it's an audit of all the police department's policies. That's really what leads to certification. And last time I talked to our sergeants more than a year ago, they were using Beaver Creek as their consultants on this, how to do this. So they're somewhat in... In, I wouldn't say in conflict, but and their intention, which I think is positive, is that they want the department to be seen as a professional police they want, I mean, that's the goal here. But the collaborative has slowly had a slide away from more community-based policing. Which it, at first it did that. It would give people money to set up these things. But it sort of moved into more, you know, they, they're following the trend. They're following the, the, what's going on. The wave. And, um, their latest thing that they're concerned about is uh, surveillance policies. So that's interesting. But anyway, they have this. This is one of the. Do you policies. know what? Uh, can I just ask, on the surveillance? Do they have a perspective? I don't know anything about it. Okay. I just saw. I I called them, asked them what they were giving money for. Yeah. Nothing. They used to do all these. Are they giving money for surveillance or no, for no. surveillance policy? They're not giving anybody oh. money when they ran out of money. <laughs> That's why they ran out of money, but then now they're doing policies and certifications. And then they do have one that relates to employee misconduct standards. So that's interesting. And then also there is just a whole lot of research about uh, the challenges of doing that kind of you know, citizen oversight and review. It's not impossible to do, but it is something that it has, it's not something to do quickly, I say that, which is why our group had said, let's have the council set up kind of a study group of you know, research yeah. to find out what the risks are. And basically, there's a big risk of lawsuits to the village, among other things. So you really have to have things well researched before you jump in with the review process. Which, so maybe the question for us, I mean, I mean, Lisa, when she actually was here at the last meeting, basically <coughs> said, I'm cooking this up. I'm not even going to tell you what it is. Remember? Uh, you know, um, and that's her private. It's fun. But I mean, we should have some way of offering our insights and input to her because we think this could be a proof of what it is, right? We do think it's a bit confusing and maybe a bit of a I agree with you. Um, how do we want to approach Lisa? I mean, you know, we can discuss this all night, but if she's not here, that doesn't really help us. Put her on the agenda for the next meeting and ask her if. I mean, I, 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 I think she she's she hear the, you know, she would want to hear, I'm sure, these comments. I agree with that, but I believe this is on. Uh, it's no, not, not on, the on the next meeting. That's, okay. Yeah. And when so, I, so that's and when I, I talked talk to Brian, I didn't talk to Lisa about it. He thought it, it might be delayed into next year. Okay. Is what he thought. Yeah. But I don't know what Lisa. Thought. Well, I mean, I can send her more information. I've already talked to Mary Ann, who's a friend, and you know, I'm saying. This is like nuts. She has to slow down and look at all these other things. And she said, hey, we would all get together, which is fine with me. I can send her more stuff. But the, 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 sorry. Yeah. Um, the mediation group hasn't signed on to do this. And the school have have so they much training. haven't. And Marianne was like saying that no she idea. didn't think they should do, be that person. They have no so. idea how much training they have to have. Right. So they, I don't think that they've, agreed to this flow chart at all, so it's just a thought. My guess is that Lisa put this together as a draft and mm -hmm. you know, and it's and it would probably say, I have not spoken to her about this, and probably say, it's full of holes, it's a rough structure, and 
I look forward to input because it's clearly you know, sort of got big stuff in here. It also continues to seem to me that it talks about doing the same kind of thing that the task force and a citizen review board. And so maybe we need three instead of just one group working on this kind of stuff. <laughs> yeah. John, you've been trying to get the word of interest. Uh, so perhaps let's just... I guess I, 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 I'm taking a charitable view of this, that it neither has anything to do with community or review structures or like accountability at all. And that it's really, all it is is about basically the same level as, as, as this, that like basically it's just about how you take in complaints and then like maybe something about transparency, that's it. But like, yeah. and uh, if it's just, if he's just trying to meet that standard, then like maybe there's something that could be done that like may be a small, minor like process improvement around that. And if, and then it's like, oh, you're not really trying to like do citizen oversight nor, you know, trying to do JSDF, you're just trying to like handle complaints properly. Right, sort of. but, but if that's what she's doing, it needs to be labeled something different. Because it miscommunicates. Mm -hmm. Also needs to be like very clearly stated, like up front, like we understand that people have been really concerned about this. Well, what's citizen oversight? This is not about that, because otherwise people are going to get confused, because that's what's in the, in the air. Well, so it does seem like we're all saying similar things, <laughs> not the same thing. So uh, right. who wants to like um, speak with Lisa, let her know that we'd be glad to provide input uh, at the next meeting, or however. No, I'll be. Pardon? I'll do that. Well, I will do that. I mean, I've already heard and started some conversations with the guys. Oh, go ahead. Okay. All right. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you, Thanks. guys. Yeah. Okay, anything else on that one? It does in the flowchart say proposed high level initial process, which is one of the things that leads me to believe that this is a scalable one. So I wouldn't well, expect I a whole lot of detail. I, mean, I wouldn't look for a whole lot of you know specifics in it. Well, the, the, I want us to move on, you guys, because I, I, mean, I think we're, we're in closure on this particular item. Uh, that will speak to her, and if she wants our input, we'll have a real full blown discussion at the next meeting. Okay. All right. Um, then we're on to our other the discussion topic building bridges between wise community and YSPD. And then there's a uh, the reference to this article that's attached the building trust article. And who, who wants to lead that conversation? Is that you, Ben? Yeah, you can get a little bit of um, uh, We, as a group, decided in our last meeting that oh, this okay. was what we, that we wanted to spend some time talking about um, the lack of trust that the community feels for its police department and whether there, what ideas we might have uh, for what to do about that. And so I just spent a little bit of time looking for some background information. And these two articles had nice kind of the summarized lists that I thought were helpful. And so. Yeah, it was my suggestion because, as I said last time, I think we've done a lot of work as a task force to focus on specific things like the surveillance policy and a taser policy and whatnot. But the thing that is most significant in the community to me in terms of the justice system is that people are have strong you know, negative emotions about the police. And we can have all the policies and procedures and task forces and whatever we want, but if people still have those strong feelings, that's a problem. And I think you know some effort needs to be made to try and resolve those those issues. Um what I started thinking about is why. Why do people distrust the police? And uh, I think if you ask people, why do they distrust the police? The people who do. Not everybody does. Some people who do. Um, I think, I I'm, think part of it is, um, you know, the role that society is, that they think they're supposed to play, and that people feel like it, they make it less safe for them. They actually make things less safe. And so, um, and then if you ask people, and so this actually would be interesting, you know, for in our group to say, so, you know, you know, I think it's really getting down to, okay, so what makes you feel less safe? What is the police office, what is the police doing that makes you feel less safe? And really identifying very specific things that 
people, you know, so, you know, we're, our guidelines say we're safety centered. We're trying to provide greater safety. But there's also this thing called the ORC where I think sometimes our police officers feel their primary responsibility is to the law and enforcement. And so anyway, I think thought this was an interesting, some of these little statements in here. Enforcement's not the core of our work, harm reduction, sustaining healthy communities. I mean, it's, it's like a whole different approach. Exactly. It's like a total transformation has to take place in terms of what the role is. Our people are not going to trust the police. You can talk about it all day long, they can get to know people, but when people see police officers, often all, many of us, we're like, oh shit, and what am I doing? Am I speeding? You know, and things related to the car, you know, and um, I have two drinks before I got in my car, and oh shit, you know, I could, I could lose my nursing license, you know, I'm just making stuff up here, but. You know, that doesn't feel sure. Stop. I ran to a stop sign. Oh my god. So anyway, uh, she never only just has two drinks. <laughs> That's not actually true. But I hardly drink that much. I was making this up. Except when she leaves this meeting. Exactly. So anyway, you know. I keep thinking about this latest episode with Dr. Agna. Yeah, my two-year-old Dr. Agna was beloved by the town, being you know, you know run down <laughs> with sirens. But I only have to say something about that, which is not a popular point of view. Probably should put it on public record. And yet, here you go. <laughs> <laughs> I probably will agree with you. Sorry. I might agree with you. Go ahead. He followed policy and what he learned in the Ohio Academy, how he respond to a hit run. He did not, how would he know it's this old guy? They have no way of knowing it's a hit run accident, he's got his lights going, the guy's not stopping, the guy pulls into a garage, he wants to go home at night so he wants to make sure he pulls out his gun just in case this guy's coming out with a gun. And he sees it's this old guy. Yeah. I mean, the only thing is I don't know whether or not he ran the plates on him. You might not have had enough time, but I was, I've wondered, I, I have a similar response to it. You know, he, he it's not, it isn't just the guy, an old guy got an old nice guy got a gun pulled on him. Yeah, yeah, it's no, a bigger well, I think it was a series of mistakes that this particular officer had done up until this point. Before that. Yes. 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 yes, 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 he already was about the, the incident itself. Right, the, the accusation is he, poured a, he pulled right. a gun on this poor old man, and that's the whole story. We're going to judge him on that. Right, I, but people I, I don't bring your, in the past I, I take stuff point. he did either, though. I mean, I think it was a straw that broke the yeah. camel's back or whatever. <laughs> but that's what they have done. I think most people are thinking about the last thing that happened. That's just what was needed because yeah. it was so old way to put yeah. Everything else that's been happening with them yeah. has yeah, nothing to do with that. No one talks about that instance as uh, their reasoning for wanting them to go yeah. Yeah. at all. So, like, I mean, like, it's one of those, like, that had that, but it was going to happen. So, uh, well, I'm not totally done. I'm just saying, bring oh, any new person. Okay, we can't hire anyone unless they've been through a product. They have to be. They have to be certified by a They go through a pot academy. They're going to have this this mindset, you know, and we're going to live with that for quite a long time. And we're talking about changing a culture that's really. Good. You have right. to deprogram them somehow. Deprogram them. We need so new academies. We build if the, they go through the, the California, <laughs> the is that okay, or they have to go back to a that I don't know. I don't know. What, so, what, I don't even want to change the question. Uh, are there any academies? Are there any academies that might no. some of the states? No, there is probably not. Okay. That's probably so not. Well, so the thing I want to say mm -hmm. about these lists that really, really stood out to me is back to justice systems. And the points made a couple of different times in different ways that um, really resonated for me that if what we do is keep pointing to the police department and saying you need to change you need to be different you stop doing what you're doing and be a different bunch of people that is not going to work it requires the community reaching out the council reaching out the police department being willing to reach out, it requires all of that. 
for any of this to really change in a significant and long-term way. Um, and that's the piece that I just don't hear in the conversations. The conversations in the newspaper, the conversations in the coffee shop, the conversations that we tend to have, that was Al's you know, big point that he felt passionate about. Um, and so if we want to build trust, I want to know, one of the things I want to know is what does it feel like to be a police in this town? What is in their way of being the kind of police that we would like them to be from their point of view? And unless we can begin to get that in the mix, I just think it's going to be like this. So that's my big takeaway. Well, I'd like to piggyback on that. I, and I think that that covers a lot of territory. And in, in, in two things. Um, I'm reminded of the story that my Sun tells about a, you know, a poet, a Chinese poet he interviewed was born a little bit before the, the Cultural Revolution. And as a four-year-old, she watched her father, who was accused of being a bad guy in the village, being forced to sit in a chair while people beat him and berated him verbally and threw things at him. And then he was 20 years, she goes into an orphanage and 20 years later, she finds him you know, mentally disabled and homeless. So I think there's a lot of need to get those bastards, I mean, you're talking about. Uh, that energy has to be dissipated somehow. It's not completely, there, there's, there's responsibility to go around, uh, but we need to address those kind of things. And one of the points that was made in this thing, talking about the community need an opportunity to event, I think that's true, but I wouldn't like to see it a cultural revolution style venting. The second thing, on a positive note, I came across something looking into this, you know, all of these work in the last couple of years, uh, which I thought covered a lot of territory about philosophy. Um, and there's a nine policing principle generated by Robert Peel in Britain back in 1829, mm -hmm. talking about the you know, police being a police and various duties, and they're, I'm not going to read the whole thing, but um, one thing that I think stands out is that the uh, one principle is to seek and preserve public favor, not by pandering to public opinion, but by constantly demonstrating absolute and partial service to law, and complete independence of policy and without regard to the justice or injustice of the substance of individual laws by ready offering of individual service and friendship to all members of the public without regard to their wealth or social standing, by ready exercise of courtesy and friendly good humor and be ready to offering individual sacrifice and protecting and preserving life. There are other things that cover more territory which I think is important, but the, the, inter, the key is having a, some training, and I don't care where it comes from, about how you interact and how you don't interact, you know. So some venting has to happen, some listening has to happen across the board. Um, and you know, saying to the new people, this is what we want and what we don't want somehow, I think is, you know, is key. Yeah, thoughts? Um, Any thoughts? One other. I do think we have to, you know, like complain about the vocabulary <laughs> with these. I do think we have to stay clear about this task force was given a charge and it relates to reviewing policies and structuring the infrastructure for the department. And we did that. I think we did that pretty well, actually. But that's different from some of the community building or the community communication. I mean, it's a different function. And I think the commission, that should be clear to the council too, that the commission would be a group that would continue to look at the policies of the justice system task force. Is that how you see it? Yeah. Yeah, but it's not necessarily mm -hmm. about building the, I mean, not that that's, that's needed, but building the positive Well, a lot of it is at some point supposed to be the um, community outreach specialist 
this is part of when we interviewed her. Right. Yeah. This part was covered about, yeah. well, will you do this, and are you going to reach out to the community? Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, and I think HRC, HRC had is. tried before. Yeah. But I don't think HRC, at one point, we seemed like we were pushed to just be like police cheerleaders in a way. But we did organize things to get people together, and they didn't necessarily come. Um, and I think HRC can still do that, but I also think that the outreach specialist, this is part of her tasks as well. Mm -hmm. You know, I've heard lots of people did it, but I don't, I definitely don't think it's like this group's, right. if this group continues. Right. Well, I was going to say, I mean, um, talking about what the role of the police department is and that it, you know, this, what we've tried to do with the guidelines is, you know, kind of redefine uh, how we want to, you know, what the police department would see as its role, what we're asking it to see as its role. So, will would change? I think if it's embraced, um, would would change the relationship over time. I don't think you're going to change it by having little coffee clutch things, you know, because the people that come. I mean, it's not a bad idea necessarily, but. The people that come are generally people who are comfortable with the police already and get to know them. And there's nothing wrong with that per se, except that sometimes, you know, so you, then you get the cheerleaders for the police and then the people who don't feel as good, who are, feel more vulnerable, um, you know, it just puts those cheerleader people kind of in conflict with, you know, it can actually create more of a problem almost. Um, because it seems to me like um, that role of really, really making everybody helping to bring safety, and that doesn't mean that things like drug driving is at, you know allowed. I'm not saying that kind of thing at all. That's, obviously, that's part of safety. You know, um, sexual misconduct happens. You know, we're not for criminalizing people, uh, which is not a very safe thing to happen to somebody going to jail. Um, but you know, it's, there's not easy solutions on a lot of this. But I do think if um, so, I do think the commission would have a role to play in thinking about you know bringing what the village, you know, what citizens generally want from the police department, and you know, to bringing it more in alignment. Which that's I think the proposal we use the word. You know that what the police department is doing is in alignment, is more in alignment with what the community wants, and I think to the extent that that starts to happen more, uh, we're going to get there's trust is going to improve because people will feel like they're bringing more safety, you know, they won't feel threatened by. The so I think the other piece in these lists that popped out to me that is in your draft. Um, is that whole notion of you get what you measure. And so part of switching this around would be figuring out what sorts of behaviors and attitudes we want from police that then align with our community values and measuring them in an ongoing way among community members, and I think also among police. Yeah, because we don't hear about it, that when I've gone and talked to the sergeants and, and to the chief, and they'll say, well, I did this the other day, and this and this, and we don't hear the positives that they've done, because that doesn't go into the newspaper. Our focus is right. just the negatives, and they really do a lot of positive things in our community that you would not believe and you don't know about. Because they don't go around telling each other, or maybe they do tell each other, but the public doesn't hear. Some of it's because it's it's personal, you know, and we're right. small towns. And there's confidential Right, and that would, issues. you know, yeah. But we don't hear about those things that they do that are positive. But I don't know whose role that is to show that, because if you show that, that if you point out the positives, then people mistrust you to be unbiased, I suppose. Yeah, it's the cheerleading. Right, I've tried to do it before, and then I just hear all the negatives about that specific officer. And I will say, but this officer did this, or the sergeant did this, and it really benefited me or someone else. And But I always then hear the negative part. Like, the negative is much larger than 
all of the positives that sticks. Um, is HRC still take on that role of those sort of community? I have no idea. I'm not on HRC that. anymore. Right. It's Dave does. <laughs> it's Dave. Did they still? Well, HRC once had a role in trying to have more communication between the community and officers, and maybe you know, sort of the coffee clutch idea, but some of those kinds of things to build better relationships or get people to know each other. And I wondered if that's still part of the mission, or they still have that interest. The interest is there, but no, it's. Everyone's afraid of stepping on other people's toes. So this guy created HRC to step back. Anything, please. Well, I think. Yeah. The Dayton police could do listening tours with the different parts of the city. We could ask our officers, like, they could go to Gulch one night, and then they could go. Well, they knew that. They used to do that. Come on, Dr. Green is a little. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And John, that, that, that reminds me of the, the reason why I put HRC's regular meeting in my Google calendar. Just to remind me every month that I should go to their meetings and tell them that they shouldn't ever feel like they're stepping on their toes, that there's more than enough Yellow Springs police issues for them to work on. But hearing that only from me, and probably not the most credible manager, messenger. So why don't we as JSDF, I move, that, that it be conveyed to HRC that they should feel free to work on any police issues that they wish, and that JSTF will not feel that its toes were being stepped on, because there are so many, there's so much work to be done. Well, I mean, that, this was created because we tried to do these things on HRC, like, you know, and, and then this was created, and they were right. like, we don't want you to do and much. You could, you could even convey, I feel like part of this conversation was in part about things that people feel like this group has not worked on at all, but the HRC has worked on in the past, and people sort of having the sense, I mean the question specifically was, hey, are you guys still working on these things that we aren't working on? So you could even sort of convey, oh, here are like the areas that we don't expect JSDF or the commission to ever deal with, but, and just like express a general openness to like mm -hmm. the HRC continuing to work on placing issues. <laughs> right, because I hate that, I hate that idea of like, basically there being, sure. Yeah, of like of like people just like yeah exactly standing out of space and like preventing doing sort of yeah oh, trying to get out. All right, so is everybody in? I don't know. Well, I mean, within reason, they they can you know they can't set policies and things like that. And do yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, that was the problem. They can organize communication, like and conversations with police and different events. And, and they can do like, research. Research yeah, sure, is always right. hard. Go for it. Well, it seems like we're, we're <laughs> all of these groups, this, the council, the HRC, and whoever else are in a certain amount of flux. You know, and there's uh, both end of the year, because it's the way the end of the year works in, in this culture, and um, you know, another time limitation. So I would think we could spend time sort of putting together we a task force, more of a plan for handing off to the future group. Like one of the things that we could do is encourage that somebody work on figuring out ways to improve the situation by working on these things, whatever that might be. That sounds sort of vague, but clearly you know, the issues are there. Uh, there are many people that could pick it up and run with it, but you know, somebody needs to put some boundaries around what those would be and, and assign some responsibility. And so, we're not going to solve it, but I think it's an important thing to pass on, whether it was in our list of things in our charge or not. Uh, and if HRC is or isn't doing it, then you know <clears throat> they can do what they want. But uh, then I would expect that the you know, somebody needs to move on it. So I would say let the next task force have that as another thing to consider, and we put together more of a suggestion about some important things for them to work on and be available to help them. Who's the chair of HRC? Oh, still Nick. Who? Nick Cunningham. Okay. Well, what if we were to invite me to our next meeting? I'm not to put him on the hot spot or anything, but just because we will be discussing, you know, closure with our group, and then he can sort of see for himself the issues we've addressed, the things we haven't addressed, and, you know, he might 
clarify. And maybe yeah. by then we'll know yeah. what council's done with the commission. Yeah. Would that be reasonable? Well, what's left on our agenda for this evening? Uh, the reports from work. I would invite Kevin Stoke for a while since he's the liaison. Is this the reason? Is that, can we get the way you're trying to do Yes, I think we're ready to go to a next reading. Nick may not go for it. Who wants to just extend the invitation? It's not like he's required to come or anything like that. <laughs> I think, I think well, Steve made a note. I give, a, yeah, I give what's happening. Okay, so just let him know that we're, we would love them to come. This meeting, the next meeting, you know, the, 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 any of the next two meetings uh, would be very soon. And Kevin too, because I don't know why yeah. I'm next term about. Uh, so anything else on this side? That was a good conversation. Yeah, I like this. Okay. Yeah, thank, thank yeah. you all for. And it's actually two. Yeah. Yeah. So let's yeah, go over there. Yeah. Let's do the working group reports. We've heard a little bit about each of these already. Um, so anything new, Mayor's core working group? Okay. Said it all many times. Okay. And so many times. Um, and police working group? Nope. Said it all. <laughs> I, would, I would like Pat to uh, tell us all about Citizen Advisory. About what? Citizen Advisory Board? All about them. All about them. All about them. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm being, I'm being a brat. No. We got nothing. Okay. <laughs> uh, the surveillance issues, I will, I will simply say that we, we took what, what this group did, went to council, council looked at us if you like this, Stephen Howard, uh, we have a couple little tweaks we'd like you to make, and we asked me to work with Chris Connor, the, the solicitor, and Chris and I have been working on this actually quite a bit. Um, and he had some ideas about how to change, language to change, and we've gone back and forth, and I think today we actually ironed out the final piece of planning. I'm waiting to see, he's accumulating it all into the final document. To see that, but we may in fact have a new document that is true to what we did. It just has some slightly different language and approaches. The main thing that I think is different is that the chief wanted to make sure that we grandfathered in the use of police dashboard cameras. Um, and so that wouldn't have to come. And the way we handled that was by saying, as long as you continue to use them according to your current policy, um, it's fine. But if you want to change it, then you will have to. Is there anything about uh, you know keeping the data, keeping the that uh, do they already have a policy? I imagine it's government. Uh, you know, uh, well, I, I can go into that, but um, for what Chris is, wants to do is to take the existing data retention policy and, to, and revise right. it top to bottom in order to try to capture these things. And the way our capture these things, uh, all of these new, any possible new data, okay. Flow, okay, okay, to try to specify what that would be. But whenever they bring a new request for a technology to council, they will have to say pursuant to this piece of the of our existing policy, or we want to change the policy. And here's one. And council can look at it, and if you don't like what the data retention policy is, you say we won't approve it with that. You're going to have to change that. So that becomes just another element that council evaluates in deciding whether to approve or not approve particular statements and technology. So some of them. Mm -hmm. And that's pretty much true the way it was written before. So I think it'll be good. Hopefully we'll have something done. My understanding is it'll be dealt with in November. Um, and uh, you know it'll be a good thing. Yeah. Oh, really good. Yeah. Uh, and only oh, my wife uh, made me watch them at dinner. <laughs> <laughs> that's actually better than that. She, there's a TED talk <laughs> by a law professor somewhere where she talks about these surveillance technologies and just it gives you shows you examples of just how powerful they are and how problematic they can be. And then at the end of her little talk, she recommends that local governments adopt policies that allow them to get them. So it's kind of perfect. And uh, if I can get them, you know, for yeah, that, I was gonna say, do you know who did that one? Or, I, 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 I will. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's worth looking. Yeah. It's just five minutes. It's a little short. Oh, yeah. It's not all. That would be Real short. Um, so we'll have that. Uh, data analysis group, John? I don't think we have anything to report. Okay. okay. Uh, that is the hot dog. Uh, so agenda planning for November. 
Uh, and let's get the get it on our calendar. What's the date? Second Tuesday. Four Tuesdays. And then let's also just yeah, look and see if we're going to have the yellow things. Yeah, December, yeah, I don't know. So second Tuesday yeah. is the 13th, yeah. and I got a little bit say. I don't know what I thought it was going to be. Second Tuesday in December would be the 11th. Okay. Uh, do people think we want to actually, the first place is the, is the November meeting day work for everybody? Or the 13th. I won't be here, but have fun. Okay, thank you. We will. And then December 11th, does that seem plausible that we would actually have a meeting then, or are we kidding? Can we well, place that question on the agenda of the November meeting? Yeah. Okay, good. 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 All right, good. So let's keep in mind that, you know, it's quite possible November is our last meeting. So as we're doing our November agenda planning, let's, you know, think about it. Yeah, that's the back of our minds. Okay. November agenda planning. Thoughts? So we were going to ask Kevin and uh, yeah, so the HRC. HRC. Did you have HRC for the month? So if you can just, can you just send them an email then? For next month? Let us know if they're coming. If they're not coming, that would affect that agenda. Yeah. Well, it would. If we have it a what? week before the work, the first of the So it was. But it sounded as though this group wanted to discuss whether or not Kevin and Nick are here. Um, suggestions for a future group to work on, hand off. Right. So those things. And I wonder if there's any kind of pre-work people want to do so that we bring things kind of. I don't think so. I, think we'll I was going to oh, say, if, if, if Packet sent us the final report, and maybe, I mean, out to everybody for them to review, to see it, but, you know, as a way. And then the other thing I was thinking is, I don't know if we should, if you want to send out the resolution of the JS to the JSTF, you know, so that we can kind of look at what did we not get done, uh, and that kind of thing. Um, I okay. As I, also, to think about. I also wonder whether working groups. I mean, one way to structure this is working groups think about what their suggestions are for future groups and bring something okay. from each working group to put okay. on the table. So, so like bring a task force. Yeah. Actually, all right. Yeah. About the working groups efforts or the task force efforts. Um, I think Andrew's both, but what were you asking? Probably both, yeah. I was going to say, even if there isn't a commission set up immediately or whatever, council will be setting goals around the justice system for 2019. So that is another place that our suggestions yeah. can be getting onto that, that if there is not a commission. Okay. So, yeah. we also so it's just a way to do a little bit of thinking before we walk in. Yeah. yeah. We also wanted to at least offer to have a conversation about Lisa's uh, yes. citizen complaint board uh, complaint process idea. So she's up for a right. agenda. What else we got for? Uh, as much as I can stand. Ken, I noticed you've been sitting there. Did, is there something you wanted to say? Uh, since you, uh, well, thank you for asking. We're, we're at the agenda place. So if there's anything you want to make sure we talk about in November. <laughs> Um, well, uh, between now and then, I would like to see what, what the staff, I think it would be advisable if all of the surveillance, the data, the police commission all had their uh, reports and their information wrapped up for not just the review of council, but of the public. I would like to see that. Well, there's a final report, but I don't know if there's any addendums that need to be added to it. For all of these separate? Yeah. Well, it's summarized. It's, 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 summarized. it's, 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 it's a very simple summary. Yeah. It's what, four pages? No, it's like one or two because we wanted to make sure the council would read it. For each of the groups. Each of the groups will have, I mean, will be addressed in some fashion that will kind of summarize what they did. And then we're also talking about the idea that. Things that we view as 
uh, loose ends that we hope somebody will pick up, will identify. Well, there's yeah. things that were in yeah. the chart, because we had yeah. a charge from council, but some right. of those things we were not able to take on. Yeah. We identify what we were able to right. And I know you've been particularly interested in the police complaint review process, and that was on our agenda as a proposal from Lisa, and we're going to invite her to have a conversation, about, a more full conversation with her. Is that going to happen next month? Or? Well, it's it's her proposal, and sort of in some ways up to her. She has to come. Whether she wants our input or not, in a way, yeah. you know, I'm sure she does. Yeah. Well, the question is, is she bringing to come to council? But I don't think so. Before then. Okay. Anything else for the good of the call? Is that? I'm not hearing that. I Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. <laughs> 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 <laughs>